Um, hello, everyone. I'm happy to um, present my talk on this uh, really nice and stimulating meeting. Um, I'm working at the European Laboratory for Nonlinear Spectroscopy in in Florence, and but uh, I began my career with um, high pressure crystallography. So now, if uh, someone asks me a question, if I'm a crystallographer or a spectroscopist, I answer yes. Uh, I'm consulted this talk with uh, my former supervisor Andrzej Katrusiak, who is now the head of the um, high pressure commission uh, of the IUCR, and also with other persons from the commission. So it's um, um, like a talk in the name of the commission on high pressure. To um, formal, formulate a consistent metadata descriptors in um, high pressure crystallography, um, we can think of, uh, we, we, we have to imagine how the high pressure experiments look like. Um, the, high pre the sample uh, during the high pressure experiment is ma maintained uh, in situ at the uh, elevated pressure environment. So um, it's in contact with the pressure transmitting medium and um, the pressure vessel elements uh, are in the way of the a primary diffracted beam, uh, which uh, contaminates the uh, uh, diffraction patterns uh, with dif diffraction, and also uh, the diffracted and uh, reflected beam is absorbed uh, partially, uh, usually by the uh, diamond windows, which are uh, elements uh, of the diamond tunnel cell. Um, we also have to think about the different uh, environments we, we have. Um, I will talk only about, I will leave myself only to the diamond anvil cell and uh, mostly to the um, single crystal um, diamond, uh, experiment with the diamond anvil cell. But there are parasitic bore cells which are used for neutron diffraction, uh, multi anvil presses, uh, tube furnaces, the other, uh, the other pressure vessels, and they all wait for uh, the, uh, their own protocols for data treatment and their own metadata descriptors. Um, we always need to be critical about the um, high pressure diffraction data uh, because the reflection intensities are um, are very often falsified uh, falsified uh, by the absorption um, and the effects of the high back background. So to, just to um, present the basics of um, high pressure crystallography. Um, the experiments are um, performed inside a diamond anvil cell. So um, you, um, the, the crystal is inside, inside uh, is between the two opposed diamond tips. Um, and there is a gasket between them uh, with, with a tiny hole. So uh, in fact, you have to pass the backing plate, which could be, uh, as, as I will show you in the next slide, a brilliant backing plate when you uh, usually uh, when you have to um, pass through it with radiation, or it can be a, a conical open, uh, opening through the diamonds and um, the, refle the reflection as well is going through the second window. So the pressure is generated, as I told you, be between the diamonds. In the sample, sample chamber, can be a polycrystalline sample or an oriented crystal inside the, uh, the cell, uh, but usually we use hydrostatic pressure transmitting medium to uh, maintain uh, the constant pressure and to avoid uh, non-hydrostatic effects. The cell um, restricts uh, uh, access to the reciprocal space, uh, so actually the shape of the accessible part of the reciprocal space, uh, space is this um, um, toroid uh, you, you, you have here. So when, if you look at the diffraction, so, so and, it, and it depends on um, also the shape of, uh, and, uh, of, of uh, and, and the, uh, and the um, accessible space 
depends on the opening angle of the soul. So if you look at the diffraction images, they are limited, so there are like two, two layers, uh, two selected layers from the oriented crystals inside. Uh, anything which is outside that, if you collect any data outside that, um, they are not coming from the crystal, just because they are restricted. Uh, so um, it's obvious that you need to know the opening angle uh, and the orientation of the cell to, uh, to get the correct intensities. Otherwise, you can uh, collect something which is uh, just a background. If you choose a different layer, in different orientation, you can see that the layer is, um, the, the axis is almost full. So it also depends on the orientation of the crystal and the orientation of the cell um, with respect to the diffractometer and to the goniometer angles. Uh, this should be uh, like the first um, principal metadata I uh, item we need. As you can see at the uh, diffraction images, um, when you use uh, when you use um, beryllium um, backing plates, when the radiation passes through the beryllium, in fact, we have lots of uh, um, um, diffraction rings from the powdered beryllium. Instead, if you use um, the um, backing plates with the, uh, made of uh, tungsten carbide with uh, opening um, angles that um, can allow access uh, um, to the sample directly through the diamonds, uh, you can just see the reflections from the sample, which are uh, denoted like R, the rings from the gasket, and of course, the diamond reflection. The background is usually very high and very varied for, for um, high pressure experiments. We cannot avoid it. So once again, there are different design of the diamond anvils and different designs of the backing seats. And it should be also another, another uh, metadata descriptors. Um, depending on the different uh, backing seat designs, uh, you have also different absorption profiles for the diamond cell. So if you, need, if you want to introduce corrections for the, uh, for, for the intensities of the reflections, uh, you need to know uh, the shape um, of the um, backing seat and uh, the design and the design of the anvil, at least the thickness of the diamonds. If you have the crystal inside the cell, which is um, almost, uh, which, which is, which is um, just ready-made crystal, let's say. So you put a crystal and a pressure transmitting medium, usually you center the crystal um, on a diamond uh, tool. Instead, if you have the crystal um, in situ and crystallized inside the cell, and you have, um, and this is an example of crystallizing from the, crystallization from the melt. Uh, so you take uh, liquid, uh, apply pressure, and under high pressure, uh, the liquid crystallizes, and this crystal fills completely uh, the cylindrical uh, pressure chamber. So in fact, the shape of the crystal is uh, cylindrical. But if you use like the home source, uh, when um, you have collimated beam larger than the diameter of um, the hole in the gasket, which is typically uh, less than uh, 500 microns. Uh, the beam is partially shaded by the edges of the metal gasket. So not, it's not the whole um, volume of, uh, of the crystal which is diffracting. You can actually calculate this volume and you can introduce uh, this uh, correction for the uh, absorb for, for, for the reflection intensity. Um, this can be done providing that you know that the, uh, you, that, uh, your, the hole in the gasket and the sample is oriented, how it's oriented towards the um, primary and diffracted beam. Uh, and um, you should know also so, so the shape. If it's cylindrical, if it's perfect cylinder, and if it's uh, perfectly on the uh, axis of the diamond cell. Um, if the crystal fills partially the, the pressure chamber, 
Uh, you can also uh, calculate it, but you have to uh, know how the crystal faces are um, oriented inside um, the pressure chamber. Um, if the beam waste is very small, it's much smaller, like the synchrotron radiation, and it's much small, of smaller than uh, the um, diameter of the chamber, uh, of course this um, effect doesn't take place, right? So you, uh, you, can, uh, you don't need to introduce this, this correction, but it should be also given in the metadata. Um, there are different computer programs, but of course you, someone can use uh, his or her own um, program to um, process the data. Uh, which takes into the, uh, which take into the account these uh, descriptors and uh, these this, this numbers, uh, but usually they are not reported in the papers. So it's one of the program. It's Crystallis Pro. Um, there are some details maybe that are not very clear from here, but you can take a picture of the crystal inside the uh, diamond angrisol, and you can uh, define um, the diameter of the coolant the diameter of the uh, chamber, if there is an offset from the center, um, and the shape of the crystal. Um, actually, uh, this picture is very, uh, could, could, be, could be very helpful because if the crystal um, absorbs highly uh, itself, uh, you can also introduce corrections for the absorption of the crystal. So this is uh, uh, the screenshot from, from the program uh, by Rigaku, and they actually use, uh, inter uh, introduce the routine by Barry Ross Angel, uh, who, um, who uh, write, wrote a program absorb for absorption corrections um, regarding all these descriptors. So, um, all the sizes and all uh, and, and the orientation of this of this all the elements of the pressure vessel um, with respect to the uh, goniometer. Pressure transmitting medium is also uh, very important in a high pressure um, experiment. This is an um, example from 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 my rec recent work. It's not only because you can have different. Um, hydrostaticity limits when, uh, and in sample uh, steps to be uh, hydrostatic uh, above some uh, point, but also you can change the chemical composition. This is a molecular crystal of arsenic oxide. It's a, a cage-like molecule, an organic crystal, and in fact we discovered that helium, which was used as pressure transmitting medium, penetrates in the interstitial positions within the, uh, the, the crystal, but only on the outer shell of the crystal. So we can see weak spots in the raw data. And it, it, it's uh, easily to miss if, uh, if you uh, miss the information about the um, pressure transmitting medium. Right, so, so, so uh, someone can, if, if I, uh, for example, I, and miss this information, someone can reinterpret this data, but only uh, providing that he or, or she knows uh, what kind of pressure transmitting medium I used. So, just to sum up on, on the metadata dis uh, descriptors, most essential ones in high pressure crystallography are, of course, orientation of the diamond uh, anvil cell, if you use, we use the diamond anvil cell, with respect to the incident beam and the detector, which is Usually, uh, usually uh, along uh, the axis of the beam is along the primary beam uh, in the zero diffractometer position. But if you use another setups, someone can have fantasy, let's say, and um, have different uh, different position of the soul in, in the linear organometer, position, right? The sample shape, um, the sample form. Uh, the sample preparation and the history of the sample is, uh, was a crystal which was mounted inside the cell, or the sample was uh, in situ recrystallized inside the diamond cell from the solution and from the melt. And what kind of solution was used? What, kind, what, was, what were the conditions of the um, recrystallization? Which we, where we used temperature to, to obtain single crystal, to obtain single grain, and let it grow? or it was just by changing pressure. 
because you can, uh, depending on these conditions, you can get different polymorphs. Then, of course, dimensions of all the diamond nanu cell components. So the thickness of the diamond nanu, the thickness of the gasket, the diameter of the uh, experimental chamber, uh, the type of backing plates which we use. Uh, so uh, are we passing with radiation through the backing plates or there are just the conical openings? So uh, we are just passing through the diamonds. Uh, the opening angle of the conical aperture. Possibly the chemical composition of, of the cell parts, like the anvils, which can be diamond, but we can use other materials for the anvils. Uh, the gasket, which leaves you um, the um, diffraction rings on the, road, uh, on, on, the, on the diffraction images. So we can identify in which place you should expect the, the uh, diffraction from the gasket. Uh, the backing plate types, and possibly the absorption coefficients pressure transmitting medium, as I was saying, and the sample uh, photo is sometimes necessary. Of course, this brief description uh, concerned only diamond anvil cell. As I told you, there are different type of pressure vessels, and uh, we have to consider all, also them. Um, for neutron diffractions, there are completely different uh, types of, of pressure, um, of, um, pressure cells and uh, we can talk about um, powder diffraction, um, um, about uh, energy dispersive data, they all wait to, to, for, 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 for the descriptions. Now I, I'd like to tell you about some metadata, high pressure metadata descriptors which I found already uh, in the CIF files, so in the CIF dictionaries. In the core sieve, uh, we have the descriptor on the specimen support, which can be the type of the, uh, of the pressure cell. Um, we can uh, describe in the ambient environment the pressure transmitting medium. The ambient pressure is actually given as, um, as the uh, descriptor in kilopascals. It can be also the range of the pressure. Um, then we have the uh, unit cell uh, measurement pressure and the crystal pressure history, which is sometimes relevant if um, the crystal was recrystallized, was actually obtained in situ inside the cell. Uh, then there is a whole passage on the, uh, on the recrystallization method. Uh, so we should be as, uh, as uh, much uh, detailed as we can about uh, the whole procedure of obtaining the crystal. If the crystal was not, uh, was not crystallized before it, and it was formed in situ uh, under pressure. Then there are some data in macromolecular sieve. You can notice that um, there is um, descriptor experimental crystal grow pressure, which, is, which is, could be a real nice descriptor also in the core sieve because uh, not only um, protein or macromolecular crystals can be grown inside the cell. Um, we have descriptors for, uh, for the uh, cell measurement, uh, ambient pressure, also in standard uncertainties. Then there is a, um, preparation pressure of the sample in uh, powder diffraction. Uh, uh, so, um, it's true that it's um, um, mostly used for materials metastable, which were recovered, um, under pre which, 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 which were um, synthesized under pressure, and then recovered uh, and measured it ex situ. But it can also um, pertain to single crystal uh, samples. So it can be uh, similar descriptors can be uh, put also in the courses. There is a specific one um, about the, uh, about the uh, modulated structures. Um, but all of the, uh, all those descriptors I was, was talking about here uh, are, actually, uh, are actually missing in SIF. So we can, the proposition from the 
commission members is we can do both. We can actually um, supply some more descriptors to the Civ dictionaries and uh, the metadata we can store along with the raw data. Like, for example, not only the textual or numerical descriptors, but also the picture of the, um, of, of, uh, the crystal. Uh, I was, I was uh, thinking also about uh, what um, Susanna said in, in her talk about the picture of the crystal. It's not only for the color of the crystal and the shape of the crystal, but if you have a crystal, uh, absorbing crystal, some programs uh, allow you to take the picture of the crystal and to uh, um, draw the shape of the crystal, and then you can have a absorption correction directly from the shape of the crystal. Right? So it's usually done at the, at the stage of, um, of uh, data reduction, but uh, then the data, uh, this, this, this metadata item is, is, is usually lost. So, uh, as I said, uh, there are some um, descriptors that can be added to uh, civic dictionaries. And so I would like to stop. Uh, thanks to the money givers, and thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, Camille. It's obvious that you're making good headway within the commission um, spelling out what you need, so that's very good. Uh, questions to Camille? Uh, why is it that it's only in the MM SIV that the pressure seems to be recorded with its standard uncertainty? It's not a question to me. What? It's not a question to me, right? Yes, it is. I'm giving you. <laughs> uh, somebody I goofed, I think, is there, the answer, John. <laughs> historical reasons. I, 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 my opinion is that, that it was so donor to uh, actually propose the scripture, but I don't know. But you need the uh, uncertainty and the pressure value for all of Absolutely. your experiments. But, but it was not. On, but it was not on your list. Ah, no. so it's not there at the minute. Oh. Uh, no, there's just a technical point of correction there, John. That the um, the issue uh, by um, by default of the format in CORSIF can always be expressed as an addendum to the value. But for the MM SIF, it needs to be itemized as a separate and uh, separate oh. item. Very good. Uh, may I just make a comment that uh, a couple of times uh, this point has come up this morning. So in, in your very nice presentation, uh, you gave a good uh, set of examples why it would be useful to record photographs of the, of the crystal in the, in the cell. And the question arose earlier, um, should CSD uh, store actual images of the crystal to characterize it better? Um, I think that's a, that's a very nice idea. And it just occurs to me that the... Um, the image SIF format, uh, although its um, primary application is to diffraction images, I think it was developed in a very agnostic sense. There's no reason why you cannot capture any type of image using the formalism within the image SIF. You just need a few more additional metadata descriptors to say what this particular image represents. Okay, well, thank you very much once again, Camille. So we uh, break for lunch now, and um, uh, nominally 1.40, but shall I suggest